Hey guys, welcome to Fishing Tackle channel. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe. Today's trip is out of Long Beach, California. It was really difficult to find information about party boat or head boat fishing in California. So I thought I should make a couple videos for you guys in case you want to come out and fish here. Or if you have families and you're visiting, you have information on it. Let's start with the parking. Where Long Beach sports fishing, there's ample parking in the back. And the parking is free. I recommend purchasing your ticket online because it's only $80 for a full day on the victory. If you walk up to the booth in the morning, um, then you're gonna have to pay around $100 or more for the trip. So make sure to reserve it and plan ahead. Something else you have to pay for is if you don't have a California fishing license, in California, you ha even on the boat, you have to pay for your fishing license, either seasonal or one day pass. One day pass will cost you $17. And I think there is a three day pass for like $40 as well if you're planning on going to fish, going fishing for three straight days. The seasonal pass is like over $100 or so. You could easily purchase this license when you check in in the morning. So that's something that you don't have to worry about. So for rod rental, it's quite expensive as well. You're not going to get the high quality rod. You are you get to choose between spinning reel, which costs like $19 to rent it for the day, or conventional is a little cheaper, I think, for like $17. So keep that in mind that I decided to ship my rods. I shipped three of my rods because I had extra over to California and it cost me $40 and I'm gonna keep it there. For anyone that is concerned about the restroom, you know, <laughs> always your kids or your wife, your girlfriend, there are men's room and women's room. And as you can see, there's a running toilet as well as fresh water and soap. So that's something they don't need to worry about. If you have any other questions that I forgot to address, make sure to leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer them. So let's now talk about what not to bring. Do not bring your ice box. Do not bring your beer, six pack of beer. Do not bring any food because you're gonna have to buy everything in the galley. There's a full galley where you could buy beer. They have an alcohol license. They'll make an awesome breakfast burrito, various burritos, so you could buy that. There's cheeseburger, they're known for cheeseburgers. All the boats, they have their own chef or a cook in the galley full time to just do this. They're not deckhands making something. They're in there to sell you beer, sell you food, sell you snacks, and they expect you to buy this. They told me someone at the last second tried to get on board with uh, ice chest with packed with ice and beer and they told them hey there's no time you get on the boat and leave your ice box on the dock or you're gonna miss the boat because we're gonna leave we're not gonna wait for you to take it back to your car so when they tell you they're serious about not bringing your ice box they're serious bring enough cash because they're not gonna take credit cards they're not, they don't take apple pay this is fishing <laughs> uh, so don't come in here complaining that they need to accept all these payments they want cash if you only have hundred dollar bills when you're checking in ask for change they'll be happy to give it to you once the galley is open just go walk up to the cook and ask him to open up a tab and give him your name and then throughout the day just Tell them your name and you don't have to pay every time. You will be paying at the end of the trip. For baits, they have your anchovies, squid, and sardines. For today, the available bait, live bait was the sardine. So that's what we fished all day with. The boat also had some squid. They didn't have live squid, so they had some refrigerated squid. They cut them up and people were able to use them throughout the day. They don't have some expectation of the type of fish you're going to get. And even if the online information says they will fish at the Catalina or deep sea fishing, 
Um, just have some expectation that ba the captain will make the choice in the morning or throughout the day and it could just be in a local waters and that's just how it is. I spoke to all the veteran fishermen on the boat and they say that you know the captain wants you on the fish and if there are fish out in Catalina Island and if that's the best choice for him he'll go there but don't if it's not or if he's going to target uh, fish in the local waters that's what he's going to choose so don't be upset that um you you pay for catalina island or expected the boat to go out farther and it didn't and that's just how it is wh whichever boat you go to as far as i know so next week i'm taking on a trip taking a trip on a boat that's supposedly on their website uh, out of pier point landing that says it's gonna go out to catalina island and someone told me that they say that but you know sometimes they don't go out um it's all based on what's available what kind of fish they're gonna target for that day or that week and for today uh, i knew victory wasn't gonna go out to the Catalina Island, I knew they were going to target Sculpin and I knew they might target for Sand Bass. It wasn't a great day, but you know, I I knew that was gonna happen. And for next week, I'm hoping that they'll go out to Catalina Island, which um, they if they do, they may target yellow tail as well as maybe bonitos. So if that happens, great. If it doesn't, I mean that's just how it is. So um, just go with the flow. Don't don't be disappointed. So if you're wondering why I chose Victory, I think um, I may have mentioned it earlier, but it's all about avoiding the crowd. I know other boats uh, might be more popular. I think you've heard of you probably if you did your research, you've heard of the Davies Locker uh, in Newport Beach. That's consider more of a popular uh, boat but then you have to realize it's going to be a full load shoulder to shoulder fishing and a lot of tangles as well as uh, they're notorious for for crowded or unavailable parking where you might pay 20 to 40 dollars so that's additional parking fee that's um that you could avoid victory was free so and there are ample parking spaces and it was very convenient it was very close to where my mom li lives so that's one of the reason i took the victory um, and if that's what you're looking for your next fishing trip in southern california i highly recommend it if you're looking for maybe yellowtail bigger fish bonito and stuff like that i would probably look for a full day trip that actually goes out to Catalina Island and if you want somewhat of a guaranteed trip then you're gonna have to look for one and a half day two day or three day trips that will run you anywhere between um, $160 online for some boats I think sport uh, Long Beach sports fishing has that or other places that could cost in your 180 to 250 those are overnight or like two day trips so if it's a 1.5 days um they're leaving the port around 8 30 you have to bring your own sleeping bag and things like that so if that's if you're hardcore like that i'll go for it uh, i'm sticking to full day trip because full day trip is exhausting and it's much i, I don't think i'm that young, young enough to do that. Um, for me, a, a full day trip is more than enough. I think I forgot is the gunny sack. You probably noticed the potato sack in the front. That's where once they issue out the ticket, they issue out a ticket with numbers and they'll take your number and staple it on each of the sacks. So every time you catch a fish, you find your number and you since you're not allowed to have a ice box, you're going to put your fish in one of those gunny sack and they will charge you if you want to take that with you with the fish in it. Um, otherwise, you leave it there and just have your fish filleted or um, hopefully you could you have a bag that you brought that you could put it in and take it. But it only costs like $2 or $3 for a gunny sack. So if you're not going to get your fish filleted, make sure to let the deckhand know that you're going to purchase the, um, 
the sack, you're not allowed to just take it with you or someone's going to tell you you're going to have to pay. But most people, they will get it filleted at, or just buy the gunny sack for a couple bucks and pick it with them. And if you're wondering or if you're worried about your fish, they'll continue to pour water in your gunny sack to keep it uh, fresh and cold. So that's something you don't have to worry about. If you're wondering the type of fish you're seeing right now, they're called sculpin. They are poisonous fish as in they have poisonous uh, spikes on their all over their body, their face, um, their back, their fin on the side. So for sculpin, if they're if the captain says we're fishing for sculpin or somebody says you just caught a sculpin, do not touch it. Um, if you are not comfortable handling a fish, uh, I'm pretty comfortable and I know exactly what not to do. Um, and I took a chance, right? Uh, when the deckhands are not allowed, uh, around, if they're around, I'm gonna ask them to unhook it and take it to my gunny sack. I will not touch it um, if they're around. I've seen people get poked. I had a friend who got his thumb poked on one of those little poisonous spike. Um, and he's finger just um, doubled into this huge puffy thumb and he was in a excruciating pain that you can't do anything about it's not going to kill you but it could definitely infect you and you will have an allergic quick allergic reaction your body wherever gets poked it's going to get very very puffy almost like you're allergic to bees right um so that do not touch it if you're not comfortable um, handling a fish because it, it'll f flip around if it lands on your leg or or if you if you get your hands poked. So that's the sardine on the uh, live well. You're supposed to get your fish and hook it yourself. Uh, if you don't, if you're not comfortable, just ask the deckhand and they're there to help you. They're very friendly and they're very like pretty calm and uh, tempered and they've handled new beginners uh, many many years so i think the deckhand that's been helping me his name was kevin so um, if you go on victory you're gonna hear this guy this asian guy named kevin and he'll calmly teach you exactly what you're supposed to do or grab another deckhand For your, today's trip, I th went with my sister. Last time I was on the Long Beach sports fishing, there was a boat called Native Sun. So we took a trip like 12 years ago. So it's quite a long ago. And growing up, I've been on a couple trips with my sister. I think the first time she, I been on a California, Southern California deep sea fishing was with her and her boyfriend now her husband my brother-in-law who used to go out he doesn't do it anymore because he got seasick and he never recovered from it he, after he got seasick uh, one time he got sick every time even though he took drum me so even if you're not if you don't get seasick for this trip too i took my drumamine and i made sure my sister took a drumamine um, so we're okay and thankfully the water was pretty calm uh, for the day. I haven't seen anyone get sick, so it's not too bad. Southern California is nothing like in Atlantic Ocean, so the water is pretty calm and there's not a lot of swell. For this day, there was a lot of strong wind, so make sure you take your jacket. Even though it was like 86 degrees for the day, uh, out there it was still like maybe 65, 70 degrees. I had to put my jacket on at some point because the wind, it was very, very cold wind. So I always carry a spare jacket just in case. And I, I told my sister to wear her jacket so she was well prepared, but it was pretty cold. Here you go. Uh, for some reason, everyone that goes fishing with me outfishes me. She um, caught like seven sculpin, I think, and she caught one red rockfish i don't know what it's called but she lost that one because it got unhooked on our uh when she was trying to swing it in um 
the deckhand definitely said that it was a keeper, but it was unfortunate. And she also caught a calico bass that was too short. I think it was around 12 inches. And I think the legal limit is like 15 or 16 inches or something like that. For Sculpin, we maxed out pretty quickly within like 40 minutes. Uh, the whole boat uh, got the limit. Uh, I think it's five per person for the day. And my sister and I hit our 10 for the day within like the first 30 minutes. That's how hot it was. Um, I didn't capture everything, but it was just nonstop bite. So if you, um, if that's the experience you're looking for, sculpin fishing is really fun to do. Fortunately, other than sculpin, we didn't catch much the whole boat. Um, I saw a lot of calico bass getting caught but they were all shorts. There are a few sand bass also being caught, but it was a very overall slow day. I'll let you guys watch the rest of the video. There's not much other than more sculpin. And I'll see you guys on my next video, hopefully with more variety of fish. And I think I'll be a little bit more prepared for calico and sand, sand bass and other um, fish that the captain will be targeting. I know there's a lot of YouTube channels with various rigs that I should prepare for so uh, I'll share that with you and also share with you what works and what didn't work for on my next video so make sure if you haven't already please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like that. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Seven inches? Oh, ten inches.